Hello everyone and welcome to Voice of the Box. Today I'm here in San Francisco at Candlestick Park, home of the San Francisco 49ers. And joining me today is Ted Robinson, voice of the San Francisco 49ers. Now Ted, before we start, uh, please don't be humble here. Or be, don't be <laughs> modest rather. You are the voice of the 49ers, but uh, to tee this up correctly, you are obviously uh, the voice of many sports events. And uh, I, I've sitting here, you know, have studied your bio, but it's always better coming out of your mouth. Uh, mouth rather. I think it's uh, best suited. I know that, you know, as a sports fan myself, you do tennis, you do NC2A basketball and West Western radio, you do Olympic coverage. I'm sure there's a lot more, but would you mind just sharing with my audience? There is a key there because versatility is key here and you're good at all of them, but maybe share with what you do. Well, Matt, and the much shorter answer would be what I don't do. Perfect. First of all, it's nice to be with you, uh, and I apologize if anybody's wondering what's going on. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, and it's freezing here today, so I've got my Irish sweater on. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely honored to work with Gary Plummer and Rod Brooks, the three of us together, covering the 49ers every week, so I always say we are the voices uh, right. of, the, of the 49ers, all, all three of us. Um, and, and really what I've done through most of my career has been probably take advantage of just about any little opening somebody gave me. So anybody gave me a chance to do something, I didn't turn it down. Uh, I would take advantage of it. I did, I did baseball for 22 years. I'm going to go back and do a little bit of baseball this year for the first time in a while. Uh, but really have gravitated to 49ers, NBC Sports, where I work for them on tennis and Olympics. Tennis Channel, which is a wonderful channel. I, I call that my startup because they're still right. trying to find their way in this you know, 500 channel universe. Uh, but they do a great job of tennis. And it's really those three entities that I do most of the work for. Now, as you may not, uh, or you may know rather, the uh, really the purpose of Voice of the Box in the show is to talk to sports industry insiders like yourself to really, you know, the question is keep the mindset is how would you advise or give guidance to college students or recent graduates, anyone that's, or a career transitioner for that matter, that's looking to break in to a career in sports. Obviously today we're going to focus on the broadcast piece of it. Um, you know what, there's so many universities, even like your, uh, your Notre Dame University, that have sports administration degree programs, but if you could, let's, uh, let's deem you a professor right now. What course would you teach in terms of, you know, in thinking of the intangibles? Obviously, practical experience has got to be number one, but if you were to give someone some guidance, you were a professor in a sports degree program, and you were coaching, you know, soon-to-be or up-and-coming broadcasters, what course would you teach and why? In broadcast. Correct. Theater. Absolutely theater. Tell I, me why. I, I tell I tell young prospective announcers that the biggest regret I had was that I did not participate in theater. And if you think about the world today, particularly now, as opposed to when I was coming through where television was still growing and radio was really the path that most young broadcasters followed. Today it's the exact opposite. Today everybody goes into the video world. Well, theater teaches you presence poise with eyeballs staring at you and how to use your voice and how to project your voice so that the person in the very last row of section 35 over there can hear you and today I find that because everything is video that voice has been completely ignored there's nobody training voice there's nobody learning how to use their voice and as a result we have a whole generation of communicators that are developed who may look good and may actually present well, but have, don't have very strong voices. They don't. Their voices have not been trained. And so, to me, theater is the one thing that gives you a little bit of all of that. And it can't take a Mickey Mouse voice and turn it into a, a, a Placido Domingo voice. That isn't going to happen. But it will teach you to use what you have in the best possible way. Excellent, interesting insight there. Um, you know, there, you know, it's so competitive at every level uh, in terms of gaining, you know, your foot in the door at broadcasting. Maybe there's a story, maybe there was an event or a series of events that you can harken back to in your background of how you made your break. You mentioned earlier, you know, you took advantage of every opportunity that was presented to you, but there must have been a series of events, or maybe one event, something you did, somehow you presented yourself to someone that separated yourself. Anything you can share? Yeah, I'll pick one here, uh, yeah. Matt. Obviously, I was 22. I had been out of college two years, and I'd worked in minor league hockey. Second season, I was in Cincinnati, team folded. Christmas time. I'm out of work, several months, back living with my folks, collecting unemployment, trying to find something to do. My father says, call Charlie Finley. Charlie Finley was, owning, was still owning the Oakland A's at that time. And he was, yes, he was trying year after year to sell the team, but he hadn't sold it. And Charlie had a couple of things that we knew about him. One was he wanted to hire young people because they were cheap. I fit. Charlie was from 
uh, Chicago and lived on a farm in Laporte, Indiana, a, a farm town about 35 miles from where I went to college. Charlie was a huge Notre Dame fan. And my father gave me one of the great pieces of advice ever. He said, just call him. Goes, what do you say? Just call him. I'm a 22-year-old nobody. You don't just call the owner of a team. He goes, just call him. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is he says no. And so I actually called Charlie Finley. The first time I called him, he answered the phone. I talked to him. He, and he listened to me for a few minutes, and then he, then he gave me the old brush off, call me back in a couple of weeks thing. Well, two months go by, I never hear from him. Now the season starts. Charlie is, uh, is uh, hired Billy Martin to manage here in Oakland. It's 1980, and he doesn't have a radio deal. So my father says, you've got to call this guy again. So this time I got smart and I called my boss, who I'd worked for as a student at Notre Dame, asked mm -hmm. him if he would call Charlie. He did, he put a call in. So when I called Charlie, he answered the phone again. This time he said, where are you? And fortune had it, I was in Chicago, visiting my fiance. And Charlie, whose office was in Chicago. So he said, come up to my office. I did, and then to condense a longer story, he ended up offering me a job as the director of promotions for the Oakland A's at 22, with a budget of zero, by the way. And I said, I would do anything you have, Mr. Finley, if I can have some involvement in the broadcast, which is what I want, thinking I get to do a pregame interview. He goes, all right, do the third inning. You can do the third inning on radio. And as I'm picking myself up off the floor, he goes, but only home games, you're not gonna travel. So end of the story was I, I went back to New York, packed up my bags, flew out here, and for the first time and worked for Charlie Finley and I did the third inning of the home games on radio and did every other promotional, you know, basically every other chore and task they had in the front office. And I did it for five months. It was a great experience and it learned, it taught me what I've tried to teach my kids, exactly that. The worst thing that can happen is they say, no, you haven't lost anything. Don't be afraid of hearing no. You wrapped up so many little interesting tidbits in that story. It was a great story, by the way, but networking, how to leverage your network, meaning you had your boss put in a call to Charlie Finney. You were prepared when the opportunity you know, uh, presented itself, and you went, you asked for what you wanted. So that, that there's a lot, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, yeah. but I, I heard three things all wrapped up that that's are pretty, uh, good. Pretty, pretty good guidance there for someone that's looking to do the same. Today's you know, broadcast journalism world is much different with all due respect. There's so many outlets and so many different ways to coverage. Uh, and everyone, or I shouldn't say everyone, there's a lot of people at home that think, oh, I'd love to broadcast my favorite team. I'm a huge New York Giants fan or I'm a hockey guy, whatever the case might be. There's obviously, you know, you got to get some practical educational experience. Understood. That's a given. Yeah. What about intangibles? Uh, being that you've covered so well so many different sports, there's preparation, amongst other things. What are the intangibles that you feel it takes to be successful in what you do? You know, a lot, I know. Well, like obviously communication, uh, you know, being able to communicate your thoughts. And I think more so now because there's so much out there. The volume is so much more than it ever was. To communicate your thoughts concisely, clearly, um, you know, I, I happen to believe, and I'm old school in this part, that fact is still okay, because everything today's opinion, and right. much of it is irrationally based opinion. To have something that's based on fact is actually okay. I'm not a big... Uh, what a novel concept. Yeah, I'm not a big... Uh, I, I don't have a real problem with that. Right. Um, and I'll tell you the other thing is passion. And I really believe that. Um, and I still remind myself at my very advanced age here of this, is that every day I go to do a game, an event, I sit down, the person listening needs to believe that's the thing that I most want to be doing today. That I'm not there because I have to be there. I'm not there because I'm paid to be there. I'm there because I want to be there. Because every other fan wants that job. Every other fan, every fan who's paying to be here today would love to have my job in two seconds. So how, you know, galling would it be for me? How insulting would it be for me to ever in imply or insinuate that I didn't really want to be here? And, and, right. and really, because in our lives, in our jobs, we always have those days. We're human beings. No matter what job we have, we have days we'd say, God, I wish I could just take today off. Well, no matter how you feel in this world, you have to let people know, no, no. This is the only thing I want to be doing today. I know for me, and I'm just speaking for myself real quickly, it's a privilege for me to be here, even to do what I do in such a small, tiny role. But I don't want to uh, harp on a negative, but I just want to maybe have you provide a realistic snapshot as to maybe some of the inherent challenges that you might face, whether it's covering football or any of the other sports that you do cover, in a short list, again, just to give my viewers a realistic snapshot of, hey, these are some of the things that you that you know quite often might go wrong and how you overcome them. Challenges for me and my job or for most for you, other? For you. Let's just use you because you can speak to yeah. that. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the obvious. Yeah, the obvious challenge uh, now when you when you're broadcasting for a team is that you either work for the team or are employed at the pleasure of the team. And I, I liken it to being a cabinet member. You serve at the pleasure of the president, right? Well, a play-by-play -play announcer serves at the pleasure of the team, no matter who's paying them. And there's, there's no way around that. So when you have a season like the 49ers are wrapping up here, where things have been disappointing and it hasn't gone according to the script at all, that's a challenge because you have to continue to present the product, which it is, in a light that is... You know, somewhat appealing to customers, but you also can't lie. You know, I, 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 the minute that I, the minute that the listeners think I'm lying about what I'm talking sure. about, we're dead. We have no right. credibility anymore. So, so that's the dance that all of us as team broadcasters want. How do you maintain your credibility <clears throat> yet understand that in essence you're you're presenting somebody's product, and, and that's a hard thing in years like this have been for the 49ers. And so that's where experience does matter. It really, that's just, there's no other way to say it. Experience having gone through this so many times before and making mistakes along the way as I did, now you look back and say that's where you draw that experience. Right, and it's tough. You know, you mentioned experience and then trying to get experience, and we'll, we'll touch on them in a minute. You mentioned some great advice that your dad gave to you earlier that you yeah. really answered a question I was going to ask later, and that we won't go back to that. But perhaps in your field, there, maybe you had a mentor. Maybe it was your first broadcasting job, as you mentioned, with the A's, or someone that you listened to uh, as you were kind of running up the ranks yourself. Anyone that maybe mentored you or took your hand or maybe you didn't take your hand, but kind of took yeah, you by no, the shoulder and said, hey, question. listen, you know, yeah. uh, what was, maybe there was someone that just dropped a pearl of wisdom other than your family members that uh, just kind of stuck with you that you've always kept in your head that you would in turn be willing to share with someone else? guy I listened to mm -hmm. all the time growing up, Marv Albert. Grew up in New York uh, of the generation when Marv was still doing radio. He was absolutely my, my role model, so to speak. Had a chance to meet him when I was in college. He was incredibly gracious to me. Uh, as a young broadcaster, I had a chance to get to know Ray Scott and become a friend. And for those of younger age, you have no idea who I'm talking about. But anybody of age knows who Ray Scott was. Google him if you don't. Ray, Ray was a legendary pioneering football broadcaster and was the voice of the Green Bay Packers during the, most of the Lombardi years and was the first real network voice of football for CBS when the NFL exploded in the late 60s and early 70s as, as a network broadcaster. I got to know Ray in the early 80s in Minneapolis and he was a tremendous guide to me through my early years. And then, uh, you know, there have been, been varied executives who've been wonderful through the years. Um, the best piece of advice I ever received was from somebody at IMG, the uh, agency, years ago when I first started doing tennis. And he said, remember, tennis is the one sport where you can't go wrong saying nothing. Now think about that as a broadcaster, mm -hmm. say nothing. Doesn't make sense, right? In tennis it works. Great piece of advice I've never forgotten. We're almost home. Last question, just you know, gut reactions, if you will. If someone were to come to you that's uh, looking, again, to gain entrance into the broadcast, whether it's TV or radio, and again, the coverage of sports now is so huge, so this may be a tough question, but I'll throw it at you anyway. If you were to guide someone to top five search strategies, whether it's networking, interviewing, packaging yourself, what would you share with someone that would be on your short list of what you would suggest for someone to do? Well, the first thing I tell people, again, Matt, uh, I, other, you know, I, I counsel a lot of young people educationally. I, I talked a little bit about the theater. Right. Learn to write. The most irreplaceable skill we have, write. Learn to write. Um, in actual practical applications, I tell people, broadcasting is like acting in one sense. It's different in that acting is scripted and what we do is spontaneous. But it's, it's a craft you learn by practice. You cannot learn the craft in a classroom. Classrooms can teach you some things that help, but the actual craft, you have to do it. And so I tell young people, if you want to be an announcer, you have to go announce, which means don't be behind the scenes, don't be sitting, you know, being a producer, or answering phone calls at a radio station, hoping someday somebody will give me a show. Now that might work, and it has sure. worked for some people, but I don't think that's the way to go. My point is go do it. And that means being mobile, being flexible, uh, understanding that you're working in a business that there's no stat line, there's no one lost record or uh, batting average or black and white judgment. You are working in like acting in a thoroughly subjective profession. People make decisions and opinions about you that have nothing to do with your performance but based on how you look, what your clothing looks like, how you sat, how you comb your hair. So you have to get over that. This is the business you want to be and you better accept that. Which also means that a lot of times things will go down that you don't understand or agree with that seem irrational and you have to accept it and 
move forward. Last question. It's really not a question. Maybe there's a chance that you, maybe you've got your own website. This is only if you're willing that you want to just share with people. If you want to put a website, maybe you've got a blog. Anyone that wants to listen to you, obviously, you can go to knvr.com. Uh, certainly, you're out there anywhere wants to search. But is there anything that you would like to share with someone? I don't know if there is or not. And if there isn't, that's okay too. But well, want to make sure we give a shot. Yeah, no, no. Actually, and I, I dabble online, uh, and it's it's erratic right now because I'm having trouble, as you understand, Matt, with the regular need to right. up, update websites. Yes, but I, it is I, tough. I do have Ted Robinson online com where I do post a lot of flip video and and it's been erratic this fall because of football season but I have communicated with some some young broadcasters doing that and so anyway anybody that wants to contact that's the best way Ted Robinson online.com great Ted Robinson again voice of the San Francisco 49ers along among the others appreciate you taking the time right here on voice of the box my pleasure Matt good to be with you